সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি ইউএস এমবেসি ঢাকা এবং দেশ টিভির বিশেষ আয়োজন কনভারসেশন উইথ বাংলাদেশ বাংলাদেশের সাথে আড্ডা অনুষ্ঠানে আজকে আমরা কথা বলবো আমাদের বিশেষ অতিথির সাথে ইউএস অ্যাম্বাসেডর ড্যান মোজিনা আর আমাদের আজকের আড্ডার টপিক অ্যাম্বাসেডর মোজিনার বাংলাদেশে দুই বছর এবং ইউএস বাংলাদেশ রিলেশনশিপ ইট ইজ মাই গ্রেট প্লেজার টু ওয়েলকাম ইউএস অ্যাম্বাসেডর বাংলাদেশ অ্যাম্বাসেডর ড্যান মোজিনা স্যার ওয়েলকাম টু কনভারসেশন উইথ বাংলাদেশ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ সিভিয়ার আই এম রিয়েলি গ্ল্যাড টু বি হিয়ার স্যার উই হ্যাভ আ ওয়ান্ডারফুল গ্রুপ অফ পিপল হিয়ার উই উইল জয়েন দ্য ডিসকাশন মিস্টার শামি শিহাব আলিফ রহমান সাবানাজ রাশিদ দিয়া করবি রাকশন Elita Karim and Saif Kamal. Welcome to a conversation with Bangladesh. Sir, uh, you're just about to complete two years uh, in Bangladesh. So, how was it like? Well, first of all, I can't believe I've been here two years already. I, I feel like I, I just arrived. But of course, literally, two years have about passed. I'm living my dream. This is the dream I had when I lived here. Uh, my 15 years ago, 1998 to 2001, I lived here. And squirreled away in my mind was the idea that someday I could come back. And I came back, and my wife Grace came back uh, two years ago now. It's, it's, it's been a great two years. Uh, sir, uh, can you tell, tell us about some of the significant accomplishment uh, in terms of U.S.-Bangladesh relationship? Oh. You might remember, Sabir, when I arrived, November 19, 2011, and I did a little press thing at the airport. And then a couple days later, I did another. And I laid out some of my priorities. And one was to have then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton visit and to come and to institutionalize the relationship between America and Bangladesh. That was at the top of my list. And she came, as you know, last May, May 2012, she and Deepu Moni, the foreign minister, signed a partnership dialogue agreement. And the, the prime minister, the Honorable Sheikh Hasina, w watched them sign this. And we have had two sessions of the partnership dialogue. Oh, I'm very pleased about that. That's a big step. We also have instituted a, uh, a security dialogue where the two sides, now we've done that twice as well, where the two sides discuss discuss uh, security issues defined broadly. And the third leg of this stool is to have a military-to-military -military working engagement. Concretely lay out the program of, of security partnership for the coming year. And the second round of that will take place next uh, month in November, in November. So, so that's a big part, institutionalizing the partnership. And, and other areas, too, I'm really excited about the progress on health in a, a, a slashing child under five mortality, reducing maternal mortality, helping Bangladeshis have the family size they want. Bangladesh's progress in each of those areas is unbelievable. It's of global proportions global proportions. And I am really proud that America has been a, a partner of, with Bangladesh in those areas. And then if you look at the security front, we've worked with the Coast Guard, we've worked with the Navy, worked with the Army and the Air Force, uh, and especially the police, to help them uh, expand their capacity uh, to provide for the security uh, of this nation. And you see tangible results. For example, in the Bay of Bengal, uh, robberies uh, in the Bay have dropped by over two-thirds, uh, over 70 percent, almost three-fourths. And insurance rates have dropped by a third. That's because the Bangladesh Navy, the Bangladesh Coast Guard, especially the Coast Guard, are out there with their expanded capacity to protect the waters. They have the fastest boats on the bay. I was just down there two weeks ago, and we handed over six more uh, of these boats. These are 38-foot Defiance, fastest boat, 1,250 horsepower. Nothing is faster in Bangladeshi waters. So they're out there providing security. So we, we do that with the Coast Guard. Uh, we work with the Navy, uh, help the Navy develop a uh, a Navy SEALs capacity, work with the Army to help them uh, better secure the borders. And now I'm offering to work with the government 
to work with the border guards of Bangladesh, the BGB, to help them uh, improve their capacity. They've asked us uh, to help, so I've come up with a program. Anyway, that's just a, uh, this is a long answer. I better stop. But there are so many areas of partnership engagement that we've been able to develop and to deepen and to broaden and to strengthen over these past two years. I'm very proud of that. Sir, I must say these are pretty remarkable accomplishments. Uh, what do you have, have in mind uh, for the coming year? Oh, well, the first two years were the warm-up. Now we have to really get to work in building this partnership. And I think the main focus, as I look ahead, the main focus I see is working with the ready-made garment and the knitwear sectors to help Bangladeshi uh, industry come to international standards in terms of respect for labor rights, uh, fire safety, factory structural soundness, to come to international standards. Because my vision is Bangladesh is a preferred brand. When a consumer in America picks up a, a shirt or pants or suit or whatever, made in Bangladesh, yeah, I like that. I'm going to buy that. I like made in Bangladesh. That's what Bangladesh should be, a preferred brand where everybody feels comfortable buying made in Bangladesh. I want Bangladesh uh, ready-made garment uh, sector to be the largest in the world. Number one, number one, number one, replacing China. That's Bangladesh. Uh, and, but to answer your question, that's, that will be the focus for, for the next year. Partnering with the government of Bangladesh, partnering with BGMEA, BKMEA, BEF, other players, partnering with uh, workers, with, with unions, partnering with ILO, uh, partnering with the brands, the buyers, uh, all of this partnership with the aim of bringing Bangladesh ready-made garment, knitwear sectors to highest international standards. Why not? It's a moment of transformation. Moment of transformation. When I lived here 15 years ago, that was a moment of transformation. When, uh, when the sector, when uh, the apparel sector eliminated child labor, eliminated uh, padlock uh, exit gates, uh, eliminated denial for workers to use toilets, eliminated, largely eliminated unpaid overtime. Oh, that was a transformation of 15 years ago. Now is time for another transformation. And I, I commit myself, my embassy, and my government to do our part to help Bangladesh become the preferred brand in the world. Sir, uh, uh, we have talked about all the good and happy stuff. Now, the cancellation of GSP, this is uh, a much talked about topic and this will be in people's mind in the coming year. Do you think the cancellation of GSP will affect the U.S.-Bangladesh relationship? Yes, in a positive way. Because the cancellation, uh, it was not a cancellation, sorry. I'm using your word, but it's the wrong word. It was a suspension, the suspension of GSP. Uh, was not a penalty. It was, uh, it was an effort by the government of the United States of America to drive change in this sector, to help the sector take those steps to ensure never again another Rana Plaza disaster, never again another Tazreen Fashions fire, never, never again. So that was the, the, the drive behind the suspension of GSP. And in fact, it's working because what you see is a, a focus like never before from the industry, from the government, from the workers, from the brands to affect change, transformational change. And I think GSP has been a real driver in that. Uh, President Obama suspended GSP on June 27 this year. On July 19, he released publicly an action plan of concrete steps that Bangladesh would need to address to uh, reinstate uh, GSP privileges. That roadmap, which is largely rep replicated in the sustainability compact that Bangladesh adopted on July 8 in Geneva. I was there. Uh, Bangladesh and the EU adopted this sustainability compact. 
and now America has adopted it too. So the GSP reinstatement action plan, the sustainability compact, very much, almost identical. They're like this. Together, they give a comprehensive roadmap to making the apparel sector of Bangladesh first class. That's a positive. Uh, sir, uh, we, have a, uh, we have Alif Rahman here who works in the garment sector. Alif, uh, share your thoughts how, how this is going to affect the garment sector. Um, I think um, the suspension of the GSP is both um, an economic and a political decision on part of both the U.S. and uh, Bangladesh. But um, it can be a blessing in disguise for the industry. Um, in the short run, the ambassador has already talked about the kind of changes that we are already trying to bring to the industry, as well as um, something that we are already working with our buyers in the fire and safety accord that we have signed with 80 different buyers and the 17 buyers with the, I think, the alliance for uh, another um, al buyer's alliance for uh, improving the standards in the factory. But in the long run, um, we cannot only rely on the GSP. It's a preferential treatment, and we are not going to be an LDC forever. So we need to think about how we can still be competitive without the GSP. So in, if you think about it that way, um, it can be a blessing in disguise that we, as factory owners, as well as the economy as a large, can put in the infrastructure, the safety standards, um, all these things in place so that um, we can be ready for the future. So this can be a push for us to move into the future and to bring the industry from, let's say, our dark times. Over the last six months, we have gone through a really bad patch and move forward and be optimistic for the future. Doshok, Adder Report Jani Bochot Takta Biruti, Amade Shathe Thakun. Firelam Abar, a conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh Shathar Donustane, Adder Dichi Ambassador Dan Muzina Shathe, our Kothabulsi, Bangladesh Shathar Duibachor, Ebong America Bangladesh relationship. Uh, and sir, like there's this other issue that the uh, US has equally emphasized uh, is the signing of TICFA. And you have uh, previously mentioned that TICFA is a one point simple agreement. Why is it important for the uh, bilateral relationship and for our economic growth? Well, TICFA is just what you said, Severe. It's, it's a very simple agreement, and it has one action item. And the action item is to establish a bilateral forum that would meet uh, once a year, maybe twice a year. And, and the purpose is to identify obstacles to increasing trade and investment and how to overcome those obstacles. That's it. Nothing more sets up one form to do one thing, identify obstacles and chart a way to overcome those obstacles to increasing trade and investment. The reason I think it's important, it sends a very positive signal. Thank you very much. Uh, let's hear uh, from our panelists. Uh, what do you think about the U.S.-Bangladesh relationship and how can the U.S. play a role in Bangladesh's development? Well, um the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, culture exchange. I myself went to the U.S. Um, I think it was a with NH NEH. NEH program, and uh, I got I I uh, I was in Mississippi for seven days, and I actually learned a lot about uh, blues and uh, the culture there, the food and the music, and um, I really enjoyed myself. And in I also got an opportunity to talk to them about my culture and um, uh, the music that uh, goes on here, uh, the food that we eat, the delta here. And um, I think uh, that is something that always interests me, culture exchange between countries. and. I, I very much agree. And I think the strongest bonds between America and Bangladesh are, are the human bonds, Absolutely. the person-to-person -person bonds. Absolutely. And I see it all the time. And when I go to America, and I'm thinking to go maybe at the end of this month or November, I like to go four times a year. And this time I'm going to go to Michigan. I'm going to find him there. Because I want to promote more and more, just what you said, those person-to-person -person ties. And I, I also want to help Bangladeshi Americans 
give back to the mother of their, the country of their heart, let's put it that way. Uh, you know, they're very attached, as you would imagine, to Bangladesh. And many of them want to be able to give to Bangladesh, but in a way where, where their contributions don't disappear, because that can happen too. And so uh, we'll, we will be announcing within a month or so a portal for people to give with confidence. And I also want to develop uh, partnerships, relationships for mentoring entrepreneurs. I mean, Bangladesh is a country of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs like nobody, no place else, and especially young entrepreneurs. Some are sitting right here. And I want to foster mentoring relationships between Bangladeshi Americans and young entrepreneurs. Uh, and, and you could do that uh, as those advance. You could make available seed money to expand ideas. So, so many ways to expand these people-to-people -people, uh, partnerships. One of the things I hope to do someday is to bring Peace Corps back. I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer, and I love Peace Corps because, in my case, we lived in a village way beyond the end of the world. We were beyond the end of the world, someplace nobody would ever find again. That's where we lived for two and a half years, and we connected people to people. We told about America, learned about our host country, and so I want to bring Peace Corps here. Uh, sir, you mentioned <clears throat> about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, mentoring, and I, I personally feel that is one of the most important things because every year approximately just in Dhaka, 70,000 students graduate and uh, we, our job market is not big enough to actually take in a lot of them. So this is actually a way ahead in it. However, there are certain um, uh, obstacles they face, and obviously two of them are, as we identify, is mentoring, and second is finance as a seed capital. The concept does not uh, come about here. How does um, your initiatives can actually, the interest of your initiatives in this field? Well. We hope to launch it by the end, uh, the, by end of October or in, in November. We, we pretty much have this put together. And what it does, it identifies emerging entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs in Bangladesh, and matches them up with Bangladeshi Americans. And so we're building a database there, too. And the program, which is, is funded, has uh, money available for seed, to be seed money. And and, and, and just to get things started, because once things get started, then it, the ball starts to roll. It will gain momentum on its own. If it's a good idea, if it has good leadership, if the idea has good management, the ball will get bigger and bigger like a snowball. It will attract capital. If it's not such a good idea, well, that's fine too. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I think the other point of collaboration with the U.S. and Bangladesh is obviously uh, entrepreneurship and you know other stuff. But I think um, there is a lot of civil society engagements between the two countries, which I think is really remarkable. Um, I remember like you know one of our uh, volunteers just returned from the U.S. from the IVLP, and he's making a collaboration with Make a Wish Foundation. He wants to make a branch of it in Bangladesh, and he's really excited about that. You know we have we have that, and we've seen other organizations like OBAT or Village Experience or different things that are coming in. Even AmeriCorps, who we've recently spoken to as well, and you know just understanding their models. And I think that organizational knowledge sharing is also one way that I think on a very personal level we will be very benefited by. So I think that's something else to add to it. Well, I I fully agree with that. But it's a two-way street, and you listed off a number of of uh, ideas that have come this way. Uh, teach for Bangladesh would be another one. But it also goes the other way. Uh, when I was in California two, two trips ago, I went to San Francisco to see one thing. I wanted to see Grameen America in action. And so I went to, uh, it, well, obviously it wasn't a Grameen village. It was a Grameen community. And I visited the Grameen Ladies of America. It was just like here, that same infectious optimism. That's what it was. But that idea came from here, and, and it transplanted to America and so many uh, communities around America because um, 
I, maybe every word, I haven't lived every word in the world, so I don't know. But I can say about America, I can say about Bangladesh, uh, helping people help themselves is a good idea. And I really believe in that. And, and when I visit a Grameen village, when I see BRAC, when I see these other uh, NGOs, some of which are represented here, they're all about people helping themselves. And you go to America, you see the same thing. I, maybe, that, maybe that's universal, I don't know. But I do know in these two countries, it's a beautiful thing. And that's why this fertilization that Dia's talking about, back and forth, is priceless. And those bonds between civil society and what Elita was talking about, the people to people, those, those are the strongest bonds of our partnership. And, and that's why I try to foster them. You know, I'm a diplomat, so we work at the diplomatic level. Oh, that's very interesting. But much more powerful is what you're talking about. Civil society linkages is what Elita was talking about. People to people link, linkages. Those are bridges, bridges, bridges. I believe in bridges. Those are the best bridges. They turn a conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh Shathar Donustan, Adda Dichi, Ambassador Dan Muzina Shate. Dekchen a conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh Shathar Donustan, Adda Dichi, Ambassador Dan Muzina Shate. Uh, sir, thank you very much. Uh, now let's talk about a resource that we have in abundance, <coughs> the human resource. Uh, last year, uh, the remittance reached record high, and uh, recent, uh, in uh, between July and February, some 3,000, uh, 3 lakh 70, 73,000 Bangladeshis have gone abroad for employment, and at the same time, uh, the uh, unemployment ra rate uh, decreased, but the percentage of uh, underemployed uh, underemployment uh, has increased. So, I want to uh, hear your thoughts on this that how do we utilize this uh, underemployed uh, uh, population and maximize what they call uh, the um, demographic dividend? When you talk about unemployment, the first thing that comes in mind is <clears throat> creating jobs. Uh, given the existing system, the industry, it's quite hard just to produce jobs. As Ambassador says, the initiative about entrepreneurship. I think that is quite, uh, that is very important right now in Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, People, uh, not because I'm being a, I'm, I'm a Bangladeshi, but uh, I will also agree with the ambassador that they have a talent of being entrepreneurship. But at being entrepreneur is not also a very easy thing in Bangladesh in terms of uh, you're talking about mentorship and also funding. But there are also other issues that we have to think about, the red tapes. Simple registration of an organization takes a long time. And I like the way you have linked the two parts of remittance and uh, unemployment because we have seen a lot of NRBs trying to come to Bangladesh and want to invest but the policies are so hard that it's very hard for them to come and invest and their investment will actually create jobs uh, uh, opening industries or small shops or whatever so I think that is quite important not only uh, the civil society or the diplomats uh, there has to be a very strong policy change in terms uh, from the government side also Great progress has been made. Corvey spoke to some of it. But, but I have a much bigger vision, and I shared with you and, and with others my vision of, of this becoming, of Bangladesh is becoming the next Asian tiger. And I really believe that. But for that to happen, it will take tremendous investment uh, in infrastructure, tremendous investment in developing the human capital. When, when, I, when I see the Asian tiger, let me, let me share what I see. I see Bangladesh having become a preferred brand in ready-made garments and household textiles. Preferred brand in the whole world and number one brand. I see Bangladesh be, being a huge global player for generic pharmaceuticals. And I visited these factories. They're, they're world-class factories. And they're working right now to meet uh, food and Drug Administration standards in the U.S. and export to America. I see that happening. I see Americans wearing Bangladeshi shoes. I see Americans having a Bangladeshi leather wallet because Bangladesh has finished 
leather goods that are fabulous, beautiful shoes. I've, I've visited these factories. I've seen these things. I'm not making this stuff up. I see Bangladesh exporting flowers to the Middle East. I've, I've been down in Golkali, down in Jessor, walking through flower fields. Fabulous. Things need to be improved to get the quality. I see that happening. Bone China, fabulous bone China. I see Bangladesh exporting that to the world. IT, IT is already discovering Bangladesh. And we see the 3G and the 3.5G uh, coming online. This place is connected. Uh, the U.S. Embassy Facebook in Bangladesh, for example, is the third largest in the whole world for U.S. embassies. I mean, that reflects the, the connectivity uh, of Bangladeshis. Uh, so I see, uh, I see jute, the miracle fiber, becoming a major uh, uh, contributor to global development. Silk, this should be the silk capital of the world. I see all of these things, and I add to it uh, agricultural revolution. This country, this amazing country, once called a bottomless basket, is an overflowing basket of agricultural bounty. I see Bangladesh capitalizing on its position as the nexus of trade on what President Obama calls the Indo-Pacific Economic Corridor that links Central Asia, South Asia, through Bangladesh into Burma. And you turn left, you go to China. You turn right, you go all the way to Singapore and the world. But Bangladesh is the nexus for this, another gift from God. So I see all of those variables coming together. What I see is needed is an education revolution. And this goes back to Corvey's point. Uh, the need, uh, Bangladesh has uh, manpower that goes out, over 8 million in the Middle East, in Southeast Asia and beyond, building those countries. But much of it is most of it is uh, unskilled labor. I say finished with that. I say Bangladesh should have manpower going out, doctors, nurses, professors, engineers, technicians. There, there has to be a revolution of quality education, best education, quality training of skills, not just un, unskilled labor, but skilled and semi-skilled labor. So I see all of that coming together to address the question that Corvey spoke to, uh, unemployment. Do you see this engine of economic activity creates so many job opportunities, mainly through entrepreneurship? Uh, Ambassador, we already spoke many of the challenges and the opportunities. I would like to reflect on something that I think not only poses some challenges, also some opportunities as well. That's actually the climate change and the environmental challenges. So as both nationally and internationally spoken, how serious the climate change challenge is for Bangladesh. But unfortunately, nationally, we don't see it being a priority in our academic institutions. So what I personally think uh, the young generations of Bangladesh need to be aware of the, the serious concerns that Bangladesh is facing due to climate change and the environmental challenges, as well as they need to be empowered so that they can actually address the challenges that we are facing. So here comes the collaboration uh, between the two governments. Uh, the United States have taken a very significant lead in promoting renewable energy and deploying the renewable energy around the United States. So do you see any scope of collaboration for promoting or deploying the renewable energy in Bangladesh as well? Oh, my. It's happening already. There's such potential for, for the partnership that you envision, uh, energy partnership. But it's more than potential. It's, it's an emerging reality right now. President Obama launched his Global Climate Change Initiative uh, to address the very issues that, that you, you're addressing. Uh, and Bangladesh is a focused country for uh, President Obama's uh, climate change initiative. And there's so much happening here right now, happening in, in different ways, happening in the sense of improving Bangladesh's 
ability to adapt to the effects of, of climate change. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the reality that sea levels are rising. I'm talking about the reality that weather is less predictable, more extreme, that this has impact on agriculture, for example, or impact on people's abilities to make a living. So you adapt to those realities. Adda dite dite shomoy holo birotir shathe thakun. Shagu to arek bara conversation with Bangladesh. Bangladesh is shathar da unushtane. Dekchena conversation with Bangladesh. Bangladesh is shathar da unushtan. Adda dichi ambassador Dan Muzena shathe. Dosho kapna rajanin. American Embassy বিভিন্ন তরুণ উদ্যোগকে সহায়তা করে থাকে এরকমই একটা উদ্যোগের নাম হচ্ছে দি এডওয়ার্ড এম কেনেডি সেন্টার ফর পাবলিক সার্ভিস এন্ড দি আর্টস খুব রিসেন্টলি ইএমকে সেন্টারের এক বছর পূর্তি হয়েছে দর্শক চলুন দেখে আসি গত এক বছরে ইএমকে সেন্টারের বিভিন্ন কার্যক্রম নিয়ে ছোট্ট একটা ভিডিও The mission of the Edward M. Kennedy Center for Public Service in the Arts is to engage, inspire, connect, and empower Bangladeshis of all ages to better themselves, their communities, and our world. Founded in 2012, the EMK Center is named in honor of the late Senator Kennedy and his on-the-ground support for the creation of Bangladesh during his 1972 visit. The EMK Center is an innovative public-private partnership between U.S. Embassy Dhaka and the Liberation War Museum. At the core of the EMK Center is a belief in the value of service. From leadership development workshops to workers' rights campaigns, service is at the heart of the EMK Center. Since opening, thousands of people have participated in the EMK Center's daily programming in Dhaka and across Bangladesh. The Edward M. Kennedy Center, this is a beautiful facility right in the middle of the university district. Where like-minded people can come and share their views and think about how to make a difference. To make Bangladesh a wonderful, wonderful, vibrant place all across the nation. Help the EMK Center build a better world. Donate or become a member today. Sir, uh, what do you think of the uh, Edward M. Kennedy Center for Public Service and the Arts? Why the EMK Center is important to you? Oh, I love the EMK Center. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary. The Edward M. Kennedy Center for Public Service and the Arts, right in the heart of the University District of Dhaka. 60 or 70,000 students are within uh, walking distance or easy rickshaw ride. And my goal is, is being realized that this place can become sort of a, a center for uh, young people, for students, for organizations, civil society, to meet, to network, uh, to, to develop their ideas for, for building the new Bangladesh, the Asian tiger that I, I, I have my dream of. It's that, that, that's the importance of it. And it, 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 the first year has been really exciting. But that's just the start. That's just the start. You can just keep building and building and building and reaching out, engaging, engaging. Because I, I want it to be the place 
were, were young Bangladeshis, those who have vision, those, those who have energy, those who want to build, build. I want it to be the place where they go, where they network, and where they chart the course for this nation to become the middle-income Bangladesh. I think what, they, what it has provided was that young people didn't really have a space in the beginning, nothing at all. And I know what we started off with absolutely nothing, but having a space where they can actually just come and meet itself was a huge achievement. And in the past uh, uh, one year since it has opened up, you know, we've hosted several programs, one of which is my favorite is that when kids from remote areas around the country, you know, they came from Borgona and Borishal and all these different places, all the way to EMK Center, and they were fascinated, you know, the resources, the books, the center, the learnings, the teachings, and the opportunities that they could get from there. I think that itself was phenomenal for them. So I think in that, uh, in, in that vein, I think the Adverbium Center has a, lot, has a lot of big contributions to make in the community service sector and to host the challenge and uh, to host the trainings and everything. But looking forward, I think um, one, thing that, one thing that we realized, you know, while working with these young people was that there are several unaddressed issues around them. You know, one was already mentioned earlier, which is underemployment. But the other is obviously, uh, you know, our understanding of politics and engagement with governance. You know, there's one hand, we have civil society organizations, you know, you have community service and all that. On the other hand, you have how you engage with the government. How do you, how do you engage with your local UN officers? How do you engage with your chairman? How do you get a, get a court, you know, how do you get a proper case filed? Simple things, which is about running a country properly and the governance issues. And I think that's where young people are beginning to get, become more interested. And that links back to our idea of politics, you know, because we have fundamentally a very, uh, very complex idea of politics, it being a very negative thing. But I think in a much larger context, it has a lot, a lot of positive things to contribute because politics is about talking about people and you know, being the people's voice. And if that is fundamentally placed in young people's mind, I think that's something that we have to look forward to. Uh, when you talk about the EMK Center, we, uh, which has become uh, the second home for our volunteers, uh, for their hanging out, for their planning sessions, for their workshops and training, we just booked the EMK Center for the next four days to have our active citizens. We're trying to build some active citizens, and we will be training there. So that place, for us, we our office is in a very remote area, and it's very hard for our volunteers to find a decent place where they can sit and do not think about what they're talking like. They just want to build an idea. It's You can say it's like a kitchen where something is cooking and something good is cooking. So it has become like that. And when you talk about young people, there are so many issues that we can address. But currently, as, as there's an upcoming election, and what uh, our survey says that 80 to 90 percent of our young population is not concerned. Uh, some, some people will actually not agree when we go to the rural areas, they're concerned. But that concern is because of they're maybe getting a small amount of money, and that's why they're working for something. But in, from inside there, uh, the consciousness, I, I think it's still we need to work on those things. Uh, all the political parties, civil society organizations, NGOs, diplomats, international community, everyone is talking about young people. But we need to actually build a pathway for them to tell them this is the way you should work. Sir, I guess uh, with this group and you, we can go on for hours. Uh, I think so. Uh, but all good things must come to an end. Um, any final thoughts? Well, I'll just uh, share with the audience and with the group here uh, that as I enter my third and, and final year uh, as America's ambassador to Bangladesh, I do so with great hope, with great energy, and with great commitment to do everything that I can, that my mission can, that my government can, to partner with Bangladesh so that Bangladesh can become the Bangladesh of our shared vision, uh, Shonar Bangla. That, I think we all want Shonar Bangla. And I will, I will do what I can to help make that a reality. Sir, thank you very much uh, for your positive thoughts. Uh, we all hope that uh, Bangladesh becomes the next Asian tiger. And uh, panelists, uh, thank you very much uh, for your comments. A conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh is a third day of the day. Today, in the morning, we will see you in the morning. We will see you in the morning. We will see you in the morning. We will see you in the morning.